Good morning and uh, welcome here on this autumnal morning to um, morning prayer here within uh, Stratton Team Ministry. Uh, uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome you wherever you may be. Um, and uh, you'll notice that um, almost after um, apparently 32 weeks of doing this, um, getting the hang of it, now nine o'clock, um, I was looking at something earlier and uh, I looked to see the first video that we did, well, sorry, the first video that, that we did together, the first video that I did, and some of you were uh, uh, joining me on that, uh, that first time. Um, it was over 30 weeks ago, and it said something like, uh, morning prayer supposed to be at nine o'clock, something like that, and uh, some things change. Some things don't. Um, fortunately, we have a, a God and a, a saviour that doesn't, even if the curate that follows him, uh, yeah, it doesn't change either do I, really. It's nine o'clock at the moment or just after nine. But that must be the first time in ages that I've started right at nine o'clock. It's a great pleasure to welcome you here this morning, though, for morning prayer. I hope this finds you well. Um, uh, quiet night, and uh, I hope you've got good things planned for this day. As you can see, I've got a little helper. She's actually calmed down. She has a little kind of um, funny five minutes in the morning. And uh, I was out this morning, and when I got back, she was looking very guiltily on um, a dresser I've got behind me. And um, my wife said that she'd been running around and causing all sorts of chaos. So don't quite know what's got into her today. Well, I do know what's got into her. She's just, just like it all the time. In the morning, aren't you? Yeah, there we go. But she's going to be a good girl now, anyway. Um, just to remind you, on Sunday, um, all things being well, um, we will be having services at Stratton at half past nine, Stanton at half past nine, and at South Marston at 11 o'clock. And of course, we will have our online service at uh, 11 o'clock. Um, no, no, we'll have our online service at 10 o'clock. We'll have our online service at 10 o'clock. Just to give you a, a little bit of a heads up with for a week Sunday, we will be having an online service but it may be slightly a different time to accommodate a time of uh, remembrance. So it may be that we start it just a little bit, um, that we start it a little bit later to incorporate, it will be recorded, but it will be um, a time to incorporate a, a period of re uh, um, remembrance. Hopefully you have the liturgy in front of you, mine's just disappeared, or it's back now. And as we come together, let us lay before God those things that are on our hearts, things that we would like to thank God for, and things that we might have on our hearts at this time, which are troubling us or weighing us down. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O come, let us sing to the Lord, let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, today that you would listen to his voice, harden not your hand, that harden not your hearts, as at Meribah, on that day at Massa in the wilderness when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, 
This people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to use the words of Psalm 142. Psalm 142. Uh, the Psalms are wonderful. Um, I think they're wonderful, wonderful expressions of, uh, of communication, of humanity communicating with God, humanity in, in weakness, communicating with God. They, I think they are, they sum up all emotions. So they, they're songs of praise, but they're also songs of lamentation, songs of, of sadness and, and, and longing songs of um, regret and remorse and there are songs of um, almost anger really as kind of where are you God type thing you know you just need to look at Psalm 22 which Jesus quotes on the on the cross my Lord why have you forsaken me and then Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd uh, shall not want you know, he leads me through the valley. He's there even through the valley of the shadow of death. I think they're brilliant. Bring my soul out of prison that I may give thanks to your name. I cry aloud to the Lord. To the Lord I make my supplication. I pour out my complaints before him and tell him of my trouble. When my spirit faints within me, you know my path. In the way wherein I walk, have they laid a snare for me? I look at my I look to my right hand and find no one who knows me. I have no place to flee to, and no one cares for my soul. I cry out to you, O Lord, and say, You are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry. For I am brought very low. Save me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. When you have dealt bountifully with me, then shall the righteous gather around me. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. God of compassion, you regard the forsaken and give hope to the crushed in spirit. Hear those who cry to you in distress, and bring your ransomed people to sing your glorious praise, now and forever. Hear those who cry to you in distress. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. If you would like to um, read the Old Testament reading again, I'm, I'm going to put both readings again in the comments, um, just because. Okay. Full, full moon. All oh, right. Okay. Yes. I'm going to put the readings in the comments bit again. Only oh, crumbs. What's that? Let's come, let's come up with some pictures as I've as I'm typing, um, because it's it's full of numbers again. Two Kings twenty four. Verse, sorry, two Kings chapter twenty four verses eighteen to chapter twenty five. Verse twelve. And 
in a moment, we are going to read 1 Timothy, chapter 5, verses 1 to 16. Before we do that, though, I'm going to use this song of humility. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord, who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us, and on the third day will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire, and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. So we're going to, uh, again, turn to 1 Timothy, chapter 5, verses 1 to 16. Do not speak harshly to an older man, but speak to him as to a father, to younger men as brothers, to older women as mothers, to younger women as sisters, with absolute purity. Honour widows who are really widows. If a widow has children or grandchildren, they should first learn their religious duty to their own family and make some repayment to their parents, for this is pleasing in God's sight. The real widow, left alone, has set her hope on God and continues in supplication and prayers night and day. But the widow who lives for pleasure is dead, even while she lives. Give these commands as well, so that they may be above reproach. And whoever does not provide for relatives, and especially for family members, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Let a widow be put on, a, on the list if she is not less than 60 years old and has been married only once. She must be well attested for her good works as one who has brought up children, shown hospitality, washed saints' feet, helped the afflicted and devote herself to good, doing good in every way. But refuse to put younger widows on the list, for when their sensual desires alienate them from Christ, they want to marry and so they incur condemnation for having violated their first pledge. Besides that, they learn to be idle, gadding about from house to house, and they are not merely idle, but also gossips and busybodies, saying what they should not say. So I would have younger widows marry, bear children and manage their households, so as to give the adversary no occasion to revile us, for some have already turned away to follow Satan. If any believing women has relatives who are really widows, let her assist them. Let the church not be burdened so that it can assist those who are real widows. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I was reading that, first two paragraphs that I've got, I thought, there's something in there, particularly actually at this time when we we look at, um, and I've we look to support people who are isolated and in need, and that is really coming to the fore again. Uh, I have a friend who works in a community health and wellbeing team in, in, in the borough council, and uh, it's her responsibility, her team's responsibility to coordinate the vol, to help coordinate the volunteer response. And 
we, we live in different times to what we did six months ago. Um, then they were overwhelmed by people volunteering and uh, wanting people maybe who are furloughed or people just wanting to give something back and support. Now it's a different time. People are back at work um, and um, perhaps things have changed, but the need is growing yet again. So she texts me and, and said that uh, they are they're looking for volunteers. So any of you that want to volunteer in uh, assisting people, perhaps that's um, uh, that might be doing shopping for people, collecting um, collecting um, collecting and delivering medicines for people, people who can't get out to the pharmacists. Uh, generally kind of supporting that effort, please do let me know. Anyway, uh, this kind of reminds us that there are people that in our own families that perhaps we can be supporting and people that we do support and people that you do support as well. That's fantastic. And we need to be looking after our families and indeed our church family. Um, but there will be people that do need to um, that do need support, people who are isolated and lonely and people who do not have the support that others may have. We kind of get a little bit lost in the next paragraph that talks about younger widows and anyone under the age of 60 um, because their, of their sensual desires alienate them from Christ. I'm not going to comment too much on that, only because um, I will probably be taking things out of context, and I, 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 I probably don't understand the scripture, this part of the scripture, well enough to be able to really comment on it. Besides saying, I think there's something to be said for supporting all of those in need. Um, but Paul would obviously be writing for some particular reason. But I think where there's a need, we are called to help. Where there's a need, we are, we are called to give support. And uh, I don't think the idea of people gadding about from house to house, not being merely idle, but gossips and busybodies, is something which just belongs to half of the population. I think it is something which um, all of us may, um, yes, may be in danger of. I think we'll move on. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Use the words of the Benedictus. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath that God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Going to come to our time of prayer now, and I'm going to turn again. Um, I've done this for a few weeks yet, but I'm going to turn again to the litany and use the litany to um, kind of sum up all of our prayers. If you're using the app, if you click on the bit which there's a bit which says there's a blue bit, says something like um, or other forms of prayer can be used and you're able to follow it that way get there eventually but you have to scroll all the way right down past past uh, section 36 to where it says the litany if it's on the website uh, same thing click on there's a there's a, a blue bit about um other forms of prayer so let us pray These first four responses, please could you respond with, have mercy upon us. God the Father, have mercy upon us. God the Son, have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. For these next sections, please could you respond with, good Lord, deliver us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred and malice, and from all evil intent, good Lord, deliver us. From sloth, worldliness, and love of many, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws. Good Lord, deliver us. From sins of body and mind, from the deceits of the world, the flesh and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us. From famine and disaster, from violence, murder, and dying unprepared. Good Lord, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of death and at the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood and obedience, by your baptism, fasting and temptation. Good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power and by your preaching of the kingdom. Good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial. Good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit. Good Lord, deliver us. next sections please could you respond with hear us good lord hear our prayers o lord our god hear us good lord govern and direct your holy church fill it with love and truth and grant it that unity which is your will hear us Good Lord. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world and to make disciples of all the nations. 
hear us, good Lord. Enlighten Viv and Lee, our bishops, and all who minister with knowledge and understanding, that by teaching and their lives, they may proclaim your word. Hear us, good Lord. Give your people grace to hear and receive your word and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Hear us, good Lord. Bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are, are deceived. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen those who stand, comfort and help the faint-hearted, raise up the fallen, and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, good Lord. Guide the leaders of the nations into ways of peace, righteousness, and justice. Hear us, good Lord. Guard and strengthen your servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that she may put her trust in you and seek your honour and glory. Hear us, good Lord. And you, the High Court of Parliament, and all the ministers of the Crown with wisdom and understanding. Hear us, good Lord. Bless those who administer the law, that they may uphold justice, honesty and truth. Hear us, good Lord. Give us the will to use the resources of the earth to your glory and for the good of all creation. Hear us, good Lord. Bless and keep all your people. Hear us, good Lord. Bring your joy into all families. Strengthen and deliver those in childbirth. Watch over children and guide the young. Bring reconciliation to those in discord safety to those in danger and peace to those in stress. Hear us, good Lord. Next section, can you please respond with Lord have mercy. Help and comfort the lonely, the bereaved, and the oppressed. Lord, have mercy. Keep in safety those who travel and all who are in danger. Lord, have mercy. Heal the sick in body and mind and provide for the homeless, the hungry and the destitute. Lord, have mercy. Show your pity on prisoners and refugees and all who are in peril this day. Lord, have mercy. Forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers and turn their hearts to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, both those who have confessed the faith and those whose faith is known to you alone, and grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Give us true repentance. Forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance and our deliberate sins, and grant us the grace the grace of your Holy Spirit 
to amend our lives according to your holy word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Colette for today. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of your everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As the Archbishop of Canterbury says, as is your preference, and as our Saviour, uh, as your as your preference, this is your preference. Use the version that you uh, prefer the most, whichever language that might be. But we pray as our Saviour has taught us with confidence. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, the collect today was lovely. It is a uh, really great collect. But it is amazing how they could only use one full stop. The size of that sentence is almost unbelievable. But it's still a great collect. And that's the important thing, being a bit pedantic there. I hope you have a great day. I hope this... Um, it's the start of a great day for you. Uh, it's a bit grey, it's a bit murky outside. Um, um, yeah, but uh, it is what it is, isn't it? I've just opened my commonprayer.net app, um, which we sometimes use on a Saturday, and it's come up with this song. So I'm going to play this song, and then I'll do the blessing that we find um, on this app. In my previous church, um, at St Mary's at Rob Wincini, we used this liturgy for, for daily prayer. We used this liturgy for a lot of the meetings that we had. And the blessing that, that, that's in here, we use quite often a bit like we use our church prayer. And um, I just particularly like it. I particularly like it because it mentions going through um, God protecting us through the wilderness and protecting us through the storm in this weather. Um, sometimes we feel that we need protection. But here's, here's the song that they have for today. Oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you. Oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Straightforward. So may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again and to our doors. Have a great day. God bless you this day. See you soon.